Gemma, lovely to see you. Huge congratulations. I know this means a lot to you. You must be absolutely thrilled to be selected. Yeah, absolutely over the moon. I think, I think you know, for all of us, it's been such a difficult kind of 18 months. So um, to obviously kind of get the news that you're, you're going to get to go after all is, uh, is obviously really, really exciting. And I think for me as well, particularly, um, I kind of have been, apart from my husband throughout for basically since September, we've been living separately because I had to move down here to continue my training at the only designated centre um, that was kind of within the lockdowns and things like that. So to kind of know that those sacrifices and all that hard work has paid off, is obviously uh, is really massive. And yeah, now I'm just really, really excited for it. Yeah, I know you mentioned the word sacrifices, and I know you've given up a lot over the last 18 months or so. COVID has come with its challenges for all of us, but the fact that you've been separated from loved ones, you know, it's been hard, that kind of mental element. But I guess it shows your inner strength and determination to think I'm going to reach that goal, and you have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think, you know, it's been such a difficult time for for so well everyone really um and you know I think kind of on the grand scheme of things you know kind of my experience over the last 18 months has actually been you know probably easier than a lot of people I've, I've been really really fortunate um in terms of my family staying you know safe and healthy and, and things like that but um but yeah it's certainly it's certainly been a really trying time and especially you know obviously last year when we found out that it had been postponed mm -hmm. you did start to wonder if it was ever actually going to happen so um you know, I think that was definitely the right decision at the time, but hopefully now we can kind of go out there and put on a really great performance and hopefully, you know, give people, you know, something else to talk about other than COVID, some positive stories and yeah, maybe just that little bit of spark of uh, maybe inspiration that they need, you know, lockdown's been a difficult time, uh, <laughs> I think, to, to keep fit and things with a lot of people unable to, to kind of maybe go to their usual clubs and stuff like that. So hopefully, it might help people, you know, just give them that little uh, that little nudge to to get back to whatever it was that they were doing beforehand. Yeah, the joy of sport, inspirational, inspiring, transforming lives. And before we look ahead to preparations, because I'm intrigued to know how things are going, let's talk about your love for fencing. Because I gather it it kind of came from university days. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So fencing was not something I ever would have considered doing when I was growing <laughs> up. Um, I, you know, I always thought it looked really cool, but, you know, I didn't, I just kind of, I guess I just thought we wouldn't really ever be in the kind of, I guess, uh, in the bracket to be able to afford it. It's quite an expensive sport with all the equipment and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, growing up, I was always really, really sporty. My ambition was always to go to the Olympic Games um, originally and um and that was you know the biggest thing for me and you know so much so that kind of age eight when I first like my first real clear Olympic memory I I watched uh Kathy Freeman win gold and I literally turned to my dad and I was like if I get to a game so like if I get to represent my country I'll get a tattoo to commemorate the achievement now I'm absolutely scared of needles so that was a really <laughs> big deal <laughs> and um and yeah you know I always wanted to do that and I, I was sporty throughout school I played hockey at county level and I was a you know county triple jump champion and but it was triple jump that I was really passionate and wanted to go to the games in, and that was the thing I was working really hard towards but then when I got my disability age 15 you know I thought all of that was gone and that was a really difficult period because I thought that the thing I loved most had been taken away and you know there was this kind of gaping hole in my life where competing and being an athlete had been and you know I eventually got back into disability sport um I by chance really I noticed I was volunteering at the World Wheelchair Basketball Championships just sat on reception and I noticed one of the Australian girls had the same condition as me and I was like oh wow like if she can play surely I can and I straight away got into wheelchair basketball and you know was fortunate enough to, to represent Wales in that and had an absolutely fantastic time but I still hadn't even dreamt of fencing at that point and it wasn't until I went to uni and I was just training for basketball by myself and this kind of old old man walked up to me and I thought you know what's this all about <laughs> and uh you know he said hi my name's Lassa I'm the GB head coach for Wheelchair Fencing have you ever tried it and would you like to and I very nearly said no because I loved crashing into people at top speed in my basketball chair <laughs> and the only thing I knew about wheelchair fencing was that the chairs were fixed into a frame that's literally the only thing I knew 
And I thought, well, surely that's going to be really boring. Like, you know, it's going to be really slow. It's going to be this, it's going to be that. And I very nearly said no, but I am so glad that I just took that chance and took that opportunity and gave it a go because, you know, I found out that I couldn't have been more wrong. It's ridiculously quick, it's even more so in a chair than it is on kind of a, a on a with enabled body fencing. Because you're fixed at that distance, you really have got to be, you know, moving your upper body and your hand and everything so quickly to defend yourself. And yeah, I mean, I loved it. And I was obviously fortunate um, that that was just prior to the London Games, uh, where we obviously had a host nation slot. So, you know, it was kind of an opportunity to compete at games for the first time without, you know, having had to qualify individually. And then obviously since then, it's just been up from there. And, you know, I absolutely love it. It is, I love the fact that it combines that kind of mental agility and that kind of having to outwit the other person with... The, the kind of physicality and the aggression and the, the speed and yeah I'm certainly I'm certainly quite an aggressive fencer in the, in the way I fence naturally I think. You mentioned the uh, uh, Laszlo I hope I've pronounced that right because everyone yeah. needs mentors in sport and I know what an impact he's made on your sporting career he really is a special man isn't he? Yeah yeah absolutely I mean Laszlo you know even though, you know, I've, I've moved away from Durham since then and, you know, he's not been my coach for the last few years, he's always going to be such an important person to me. He really is like my third granddad. You know, he was witness at my wedding. He is so, so important to me because, yeah, he was, he was just a huge, I just think he had a huge influence on my life. I mean, for starters, I wouldn't be sat here today. I wouldn't have achieved things I've achieved if it weren't for him even approaching me that day, let alone coaching me and giving me the, the foundations and the technical skill that I needed. But, um, you know, like all the time, he'd be telling me these kind of like Hungarian proverbs and things like that. And things that actually you kind of go away and think about and be like, actually, yeah, that really helps kind of see a situation in a different way or give you some perspective or, and, you know, I think that his he will always play a really important part in my life um, and is always going to be very special to me. But I've been so fortunate really throughout my career and, and life really to have had really strong kind of people to look up to, you know, my family, my dad, my mom, uh, my sister, you know, they're all absolutely key. And I mean, apart from actually just continuing to drive me all around the country kind of every week, um, <laughs> You know, they just, you know, dad comes away to competitions with me um, and, you know, always acts as a little bit of a psychologist for me and is always able to to help me really see situations in a, in a better way than maybe I would by myself. And then, you know, my, my two coaches now, Baldiff and John, are both huge in that respect as well. You know, Baldiff is always, you know, innovating and coming up with new solutions and his enthusiasm is just infectious. Whereas, you know, John, my saviour coach, has kind of actually, I think, given me that, that ability to look at circumstances in a better way. And, you know, I think we've done a lot in the last year, the lockdown and things on kind of chimp management and basically not letting <laughs> kind of give the better of me. And um, I've definitely zenned out a little bit, even within training sessions over the last six months, but definitely for the better. So all of the coaches that I've been fortunate to either work with in the past or now have had such an important role and they've all kind of, I guess, added little bits to, I guess, the plasticine mm -hmm. kind of mould that is me as a fencer, um, both mentally and physically. So I think I'm just really, really lucky to, you know, stumble upon such a great team of people that, you know, are still always going to be in my corner. Yeah, it's always good. Shout out to coaches and mentors. It's so important in your own personal journey, as you've alluded to. Now, I think I'm right in saying that you finished eighth in Rio, but in terms of preparation going to Tokyo, you've won a World Cup, you've beaten the world number one. Psychologically, how are you feeling going into these games? Yeah, I think I'm in a much different place going to these games than I have been previously. Um, you know, in the lead up for Rio, I'd won a couple of World Cup medals, but I didn't really have that belief that I kind of, I guess, in a way, belonged in that kind of final four competing for the medals on the day. Um, I kind of, I knew that I was capable of it, but I don't think I deep down believed it enough for it to, to ever really have had a realistic chance of happening. Whereas I feel like for the first time with these games, I'm actually going into it, you know, looking upwards and thinking, 
you know what? I actually really, really want a medal. And I genuinely know that if I put it all together on the day, I can get one. Um, and I think it's just that little bit of extra, extra self-belief um, that I've got going into these games. It's a, a real kind of turning point for me. I know that now, you know, a lot of these girls, you know, there's only a couple of girls that haven't beaten kind of uh, over 15 now. And even then, like you look at that and most of them, I haven't fenced since Rio over 15. Mm. So it's not even that, like oh I've I fenced them and I haven't I haven't been able to actually I just haven't had the opportunity to even test myself against them now I'm a much better fencer so uh so yeah I think these games are the first ones where I'm going man I'm like Joe oh, actually you know there's a real chance of a medal here if I get it right so uh, I just need to I think the most important thing for me is just getting my mental space right and having the right attitude for me to fence my best I need to be enjoying myself you know if you see me kind of bopping along to music or having a little dance and I'm warming up um you know that's going to be me at my best and I have this I call it a captain forget about it attitude when I fence at my best and when I won in Montreal and I beat um the world number one I just like that day even though you know there were plenty of things that didn't go right in, in the build-up and even on the day but I just kind of let it bounce off of me or wash over me and I think that that is key and then on piece I just need to be yeah playful and confident I think if I'm kind of you know really trying loads of different things and I'm really varying my moves that's when I'm at my best if I'm kind of I guess fencing with a bit more fear in the back of my mind of losing then that's when I tighten up a little bit restrict myself to a certain like a kind of smaller variety of moves and that might work against you know some of the some of the girls ranked a little bit below me but that's never going to work against the, the very top kind of girls so uh, yeah just I need to be playful and have fun with, with it really. I think you radiate positiveness and everyone at Disability Sport Wales is going to be rooting for you. Reach for the stars, Gemma, because you really are an inspiration to us all. We'll be watching you closely in Tokyo and I hope your dreams do come true in Japan. And thanks for joining us today. Thanks so much.